the product life cycle, and the Boston matrix. You might find them referred to as product portfolio analysis in the exam. The product life cycle only looks at one product, so let's start with that. All products have a life cycle, and by that I mean that they are introduced onto the market, but at some point may disappear from the market. How long they are around is their life, and firms want their products to have long and profitable lives. Here's a diagram of a product life cycle. As we can see, sales and revenue run up the side, and time runs along the bottom. There are four sections because all products are introduced, then grow, then mature, and finally decline. Some products are introduced and then grow very quickly. They have a brief maturity and then decline rapidly. For example, fashion and toys. Other products have very long periods of maturity. For example, Coca-Cola and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, which have been around for years, but are still in maturity. The length of a product's life cycle depends on the type of product, levels of competition, marketing support for the product, and customer tastes. It's important to recognise that during development, the product will be costing the firm a lot of money in terms of design, production and advance promotion. But the product won't be bringing in any money because it's not yet for sale. This can cause cash flow problems because the business finds that more money is going out than is coming in. Established firms will use finance from other products to support a new one, but new firms might not have this ability. You need to consider what each stage may mean to the business. We've looked at development, so introduction is next. At introduction, the product is new to the market, so sales may start off slowly, and heavy promotion may be needed to create awareness, to encourage sales and to develop an image. But bear in mind that promotion can be expensive and this is a time when a lot of money has been spent on the product and cash flow may be a problem. This is a problem that many firms face because they won't have unlimited finance to support the product. But if they don't promote it well enough, they won't gain enough revenue to cover their costs. During introduction, there's also likely to be an underutilization of capacity, as there isn't the demand to be producing to full capacity. After the introduction stage, the product will move into growth as more people become aware of the product, as advertising will still be heavy. Sales will be rising and profit may be made if enough revenue is made to cover the costs. As sales increase, the firm will produce more items and will be making better use of its capacity. This means the firm will be operating more efficiently, which could bring unit costs down, as costs are spread over more units. Firms can't be complacent though, because if the market is proving lucrative, New competitors may try and enter the market and pose a threat to the company's sales. Gradually, sales will stabilise and remain constant. This is the maturity stage. But this doesn't mean the firm can relax its marketing activity. Promotion will still be needed to remind people of why the product is so good. Just look at how much promotion is still done for brands such as Nike, Audi and Coca-Cola. Cash flow will be positive and profits will be made. Often money from mature products is used to support products in development or newly introduced products. The final stage is decline, where sales start to fall. At this point, the firm can either withdraw the product, 
wait until other competitors have withdrawn their products and take their sales, or use extension strategies to revitalize the product and increase sales. Why don't you have a go at coming up with some extension strategies for Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Make a list of possible strategies on one side and then analyse each one on the other side. So, how did you get on? Were you able to come up with quite a few? You probably had these on your list. The firm could lower its prices, but whether this works depends on what competitors do and whether sales increase enough. If they don't, profit could be affected. There's also the risk that competitors could retaliate and lower their prices. If this is the case, the extension strategy won't work. Lowering the price could have an impact on the image of the product. We tend to link price and quality. So, if the price goes down, people may think the quality has gone down too. Alternatively, Sales promotions are often used as extension strategies. Competitions or buy one get one free offers can stimulate sales. But bear in mind that at the end of the promotion, customers may swap back to their old brands. Trying to get your customers to buy your product more often is a good way of increasing sales. Kellogg's actually tried this strategy a few years ago with some success. Even now, Kellogg's are trying to get us to replace our unhealthy snacks with one of their low-calorie bars. Of course, this will mean our diet is more balanced, but will also mean more sales for their bars. The last one here is to target a new market segment. If the product could be used by other people, for example, baby lotion being used as a moisturiser, then sales could increase. If faced with a question on extension strategies in the exam, it's important to suggest strategies that are realistic for the company in your case study. So, we've looked at application and analysis here. But if an exam question were to ask you to evaluate possible extension strategies, you'd have to weigh up which of the four ideas was the most suitable and say why. One issue which may be useful for evaluation of the product life cycle in general is that of determinism. This is the idea that it may be difficult to know exactly what stage a product is at. For example, the marketer notices falling sales he may well think that the product is in decline and withdraw funding from it. His actions will definitely lead the product into decline, even if it wasn't really heading for decline in the first place. The same is true if an increase in sales is noticed. The marketer may think the product is heading towards growth and therefore increase promotion. The effect will be an increase in sales. So, determinism is an issue that businesses need to be aware of when using the product lifecycle.